Hey guys, it's JH. Welcome to practice day. Okay. A couple of things. I saw uh, my uh, my master instructor in uh, in Tennessee, uh, Bill Tinker Phillips, <laughs> practicing for the Antarctic Open. Oh, Tinker, you got to be kidding. Well, more to the point, you've got to be the greatest enthusiast of all time. Buddy, I'm a fair weather golfer. We don't get that type of temperature here anyway. But if it gets, you know, if it gets like below, you know, 70 degrees or something, I think that's a cold day. Today it's about 100. Uh, and ice on the ground? Are you kidding? The only time I get ice on the ground, which I think I said in the post, is I dropped a couple of bags of, of ice at the gas station a couple of weeks ago, dropped them on the ground. That's the only time I see ice on the ground over here, Billy. Okay, guys, now what, what Billy uh, brought up in, in the latest vid that he had was a reference to Martin Ayres's twirl and dump. Now, I spent the, the embryonic stages with Martin Ayres when he was developing DOCF. Um, so I was there at the outset and we spent hundreds of hours with DOCF, so I've got a little bit of insight into it. And there's no question in my mind that the twirl is a very, very powerful move. And, it, and, and the good thing is, guys, what Bill said is absolutely correct. You can use it in channel lock, you can use it in any golf swing and it will benefit you no matter what golf swing you've got having the twirl in in your golf swing the twirl and dump will pay big dividends and you will get more speed no question now what i i was privy to when i was with marty uh was yeah, exactly how the how the twirl works in the backswing now it works guys basically to the center line of the body it doesn't twirl that way, it twirls this way. It's almost like it's coming towards you. If you had something on the on the toe of your golf club, on the face of your golf club, you'd pitch it over your shoulder here as a feeling. It, it doesn't twirl that way. It does twirl that way, but it feels like it's coming in. And when Marty talks about the J bar here, that's called the Johnson bar for the uninitiated, and we'll go into that later. But, but, but his first movement is this way. Now in channel lock guys, coincidentally, the first movement in channel lock is this way. Now to get the negative load, and I've always had negative load in my golf swing, I call it momentum loading, Count Yogi, Count Yogi. And when I made that, uh, when I got that startling response from Mo Norman the time I asked him, I said, I said, Mo, what, what, so, so what do you think about in your backswing? What, what's going on in the backswing? And he said, I don't have a backswing. I said, what do you mean? He said, I don't have a backswing. He said, Hogan didn't have a backswing. He said, both of us didn't have a backswing. I said, what do you mean? He said, we just throw the club back there somewhere. I said, what do you mean throw it back there? He said, throw it back there. He said, you, you can't take a golf club back in a backswing and try and hit positions. You've got to let momentum create the positions and the positioning. Yeah, he said, I don't have a backswing. I just throw it back there somewhere. And Hogan just threw it back there somewhere. And if you look at Hogan, guys, huh? I mean, Hogan was this. So... So the twirl, for my understanding of it is, and, and Billy was, was, was on the money, is if we, we pull it this way, the Johnson bar here, we pull it this way, that's a negative load, but feel like the club is sort of twirling. See, in a conventional golf swing, you're here. The ball's up here, so, so you're gonna pull it more up the line of the body as you turn, it stays in the middle of the body. We want ours to get beside the body over here, but, but you can still have the feeling that it comes, that it twirls back. And it's a spiral up, guys. This is what it is. It's this action. You know, we saw Elkington like this when he was with Marty. Here. That's what it is. It's here. That's exaggerated. You'll never get that in a golf swing. That's, <laughs> that's someone uh, making macaroni noodles when they throw those noodles around in those oriental restaurants. But that's the feeling. You get it there. And guys, I'll tell you what. 
you can motor the golf ball when you uh, when you twirl and dump. So so what Billy was saying about if you can put in your golf swing it'll be beneficial, totally support that. And I've got a lot of that in my golf swing anyway. I really have. I really have. So that's uh, that's that's twirl and dump. It goes this way guys. Yeah. But that that's the emphasis. You've got to and in channel lock guys, you've got to fire the club back with momentum. So it goes back here, negative creates positive. Negative creates positive. You'll never go negative, negative. You can't do that. So if you go negative, you'll always go to positive. And the positive is usually the backloading, which is that what I talked about the other day, where I try and get the club moving behind the trail leg. Okay, that was just an explanation on that. Now guys, I basically got channel lock where I needed to be for me. That stuff I was talking about the other day, where I want my arms to separate, where I want my body in the backswing to be facing here, and then the arms just separate and come down here while the shoulders are closed, that's me. That's the big major part of channel lock for me. Now, I'm going to steal something, partly st steal something from two people right now in a description of something. Mo Norman in his book, when Mo's book came out, it was called The Feeling of Greatness. And that was a great book. If you've never read it, get it and have a look at it. Um, a, a very dear friend of mine who lives in London, England, who's as big a golf nut as I am, and uh, just, just, just a very, very dear friend. You know, I've never met the guy, never personally met him. We, we've only conversed over the uh, internet waves, but, but uh, I feel that he's a very, very special friend. I'm hoping to get over and see him this year in England, and then we're going across to France. So, um, yeah. Anyway, the other day, he was talking about, he said, J.H., I went out and played, and I hit the ball great. He said, you know why? Because he said, when I got over the ball for some strange reason, he said, my swing had the feeling of rightness. He said that. My swing had the feeling of rightness. I mean, how good is that? I wish I'd have... I wish I'd have come up with that. But Michael, and it's my dear buddy, Michael Esterick, we call him Esto Besto in London, England. Biggest golf nut in the world. Super guy. Super guy. So, so Esto Besto, um, I'm going to steal your description, mate. And I told you I would anyway. So guys, and why I'm going to steal it and why I'm going to apply it is this. I think the reason the channel lock works so well for me, right through the bag, from, from pitching to driver, and maybe it doesn't work that well with the longer clubs for other people, is that I've always got the feeling of rightness every time I set up to the golf ball. I have a feeling of rightness, so I have tremendous confidence in what I'm doing with my golf swing. Now how do I get the feeling of rightness? in my golf swing. I get it this way. And this is this is probably unique to me. But guys, when I set up, well, see my trail arm? My trail arm is always here. I get it here. I get it almost on my body here. And whether it's a wedge or a six iron like this here, my arm's in that place. Now also, for the driver, and we'll just put the ball here if, as if it was teed up, but this is how I set up with the driver, guys. You watch me, this is how I set up. Club's inside the ball there like it is a little bit thing, and I'm here. So everything from the wedge to the driver, I'm in exactly the same position. So I have great confidence. And, and, and to steal um, Asto's uh, description, the feeling of rightness, I have the feeling of rightness because I'm always in the same place. So it always feels the same, it feels right. And I notice, I notice that some of the guys with the driver, they're out here. Now, when I'm out there, if I'm out there with channel lock, A, 
I haven't got my shoulders tilted as much as I need to have them because I can't tilt them as much into the channel because I can't get my trail arm back. The reason I have my trail arm back, guys, is so I can, I can preset my shoulders. But if I've got my arm out here and that arm's extended, I haven't got my shoulders pre-turned. Now, the reason I probably evolved into getting my arm in there in the same place all the time is, is because it allows me to, to, uh, to pre-turn. That's what allows me to... Now, when I set up with the wedge, guys, look. This is the wedge. Here. There I am there. It, even if I'm going to hit a little little pitch shot. Here. There. Just a little a little bunt down there. It's in the same place. If I'm going to hit a full shot. It's there. Get the six iron. And I'd rip a couple down there, but that's, that's our putting green down there. And I don't want to... And there's cars behind the putting green. But, uh, and we're not allowed to do that anyway. But, but I do it late in the day, when no one's here. Um, so look at this guy, six on, look. Here. It's in the same place. Why is it there? Because if my arm's out there, look at my trail shoulder. When it's in here, my trail shoulder drops, turns inside and pulls my lead shoulder across. So I'm in that, that exact same position, so I feel the same. So the swing feels right. So it's the feeling of rightness. Now for anybody that's struggling with the longer clubs, and I say the longer clubs anywhere from, you know, four iron, you know, hybrid, you know, five wood, three wood driver, just try hitting a few shots where you get like in this position here, here, there. Now I'd love to be able to rip a driver down there, but I'd probably go straight through the windscreen of the manager's car, which is down behind those palm trees. But guys, that, that's, that, that's, that's the most I'll get with my driver. I, I like to feel, and invariably when the ball is there, I'm here with my driver, as you see. Now the reason I'm there, guys, I know that on the downswing, my arm's not going to be there. My arm's going to get out there a little bit. But, but having my arm in here at a dress gives me that that preloading, or that pre-turn in the golf swing. Now I watched um, Matt Gray, Mr. M, with uh, with Bill Phillips on the video they did yesterday on the on the Antarctic uh, practice tee, where Matty was hitting some drivers. Now what I saw with Matty, which was pretty pretty obvious, <laughs> nothing. Wrong. I mean, he was hitting the ball great, and he does hit the ball great. He's, he's a super player. But but Matty was like here with the driver, he had this extension here. Now we were talking, Matty, you were talking about balance. And one shot you hit there, I think with a four iron or something, and just and, and, and you, you sort of shoved it a bit right and you said, I just didn't have the balance in that. Now, the balance comes about, Matty, from having all the, the mass as close to the centre line as you can in our horizontal and vertical centres of gravity. If I, if I want to get in perfect, perfect balance, and no, and no one's going to push me over here. That's it. That's everything stacked in position. All my, all my componentry in here. Out here, I feel an imbalance. I've lost the lost the balance there. I'm out here. So, so Maddie, what you should try, and and Tinker, get get set set Maddie up and just get him to try this with the driver. And I'll tell you what, Maddie, you know when you said. The closer you can get to the ball, the more height you get on the shot. Well, clearly, buddy, the reason that happens is that the swing becomes a little steeper and, and you're going to hit the ball a little bit higher. Um, now, I saw your ball flight from behind. Your ball flight is way lower than mine. And that's because I'm in here uh, and you're out there. So, so you're a little bit covery when you're hitting it. You're coming a little bit radially and, and you're sort of covering it and trapping it. And that's why your ball flight's a bit low as opposed to mine. I, I'm more more uh, back of the ball and under the ball because I'm closer to it. So just try hitting a few shots, Matty, and, and Billy, you work with him here. Um, because it was interesting that you say, oh, I didn't have my balance there. I felt that I got tippy-toed. Well, you will, Matty, if, 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 if the more your arms get away from your body at address, the more the, the mass is tipped out there into space. That's the reason, buddy. <laughs> that's the that's the mechanical application of mass that you're trying to balance when it gets out of balance. 
Um, okay, now I had a massive workout today. I'm getting back. I've been a bit lazy in the last month. I've got, uh, I'm back in full training, guys, and I'm working out super hard. Super hard. I'm tight as a drum. I haven't hit a shot, but I want to show you, and I can't hit one down here, but I want to show you how close my, you, you watch where my arm is here, look. My arm's here. It's, it's exactly the same. It's exactly the same as the wedge. Now, guys, first shot of the day. And there's a tree up there and a, uh, a 240 metre sign, which is 262 yards, and it's about 12 feet apart, and that's my target. And I just hit that between the, the sign and the tree. First shot of the day. Now, the reason I can hit the ball really straight with the driver, um, and much straight, and I used to be straight in the old days, but much straighter now with, with channel lock because because I am in here. I've got that feeling of rightness. And guys, I've got to tell you, when I get over the driver, I have, I have no lack of confidence at all, like zero. I, I just step up and I can just hammer time every time I get up. It feels no different to me to hitting an eight iron. It just goes further. And my balance is the same. But if, if I got out here like the old conventional golf swings out here, now as soon as I do that, I didn't realize how much balance was compromised in a conventional golf swing when the arms are out here. I can't believe it. I cannot believe. The only guy that, that, that worked that out and did an amazing job at, at balancing out that was Mo Norman. Because Mo Norman on the downswing went this way. That's what Mo looked like. Mo, Mo got the butt and that back weight counterbalancing going this way to, to counterbalance all that mass firing out there. He knew that. But everybody else in golf, <laughs> in a normal golf swing, they go this way. They come in here. They get early extension. And you watch, every player in the world does that. Even good players, they all do that. None of them go that way. Mo Norman was the only guy that went that way. So watch this, guys. This is hang back um, and, and good tempo. Even, even with no, no warm up. No, and, I'll, and I'll twirl this, Billy. Well, I'm warmed up now. Two shots. Come on, Jay, let's go after it. It's a driver. What did Tom Watson say and Mo Norman? Don't pull the driver. And Jack Nicholas, don't pull the driver unless you're going to hit it as hard as you can. Why? Because it's the maximum distance golf club. So I'm going after This is maximum distance. Look at this guy. Look where I am here. Come on, baby. Come on. That's in the alley. The alley's 12 foot wide. Okay guys, so so the message here today, message here today is the way you get the feeling of rightness is that you have exactly the same setup every time. And you'll get the confidence because you'll feel the same. If you've got this moving out here, the balance will move and you won't feel the same. And you won't feel like the swing is right. I just love the term, the feeling of rightness. I mean, how good is that? That's stunning, uh, Esto. Stunning. I can't claim it because uh, my great mate in uh, London, England, came up with it. The feeling of rightness. Oh, I just love it. Mo Norman's feeling of greatness, and this is the feeling of rightness. And guys, I've got to tell you, it best describes and fits precisely how I feel over the ball. I never feel anxious with any golf club. Why? Because they all feel the same. And why do they all feel the same? Because I'm always in the same position. That's why they feel the same. That's why they feel right. Now, it's quite windy here, guys. Um, I'm just check doing a couple of audio checks today, so I'll just, and I just want to check that camera and make sure it doesn't get blown over. Um, yeah, I'll just uh, cut this, guys, and I'll come back and I'll hit some shots with my new prot protocol, as it is, the way I've got it now, with a little bit of twirl in it. And, uh, and, 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 and very much, you know, facing the ball and chopping it down here. And I'll show you exactly how I want to swing the club from now on. The feeling of rightness. Wow.